Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. With a tight illustrative hand in watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Well, hello, this is Clyde J. Kell, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 69 for November the 2nd, 2020, our first episode for the month of November. Probably be a short one here because um, I was really busy this past week with uh, the Halloween and with my radio station programming and everything, and then I had internet issues, and it was a bad week. <laughs> So I had to really pick my brain, you know, for our subject here. I am here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everybody. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. All right. I think this week um, the recommended videos, I just came across one, uh, one the latest podcast from uh, Stephen Bauman where he is uh, talking about um, working, uh, what, working from – life uh, painting painting from life rather than photos and at first i thought it was another uh dig on uh you know working from photos but then when i listened to his uh, his rationale it, it made a lot of sense um i consider myself a studio artist and so as a result i work from photographs now unlike i don't know if other artists do this or not but i use photographs for in order to get accurate renderings of things and i don't usually look at the photograph uh and try to duplicate the photograph itself if i come up with a composition in my mind of something that i want to create and maybe it's got a dog or maybe it's got a woman and man you know so i hunt through uh photographs and i try to look at the uh royalty free photograph sites so i don't get in in case anybody says that something looks like it's a copyrighted so i don't run any problems there but i just look at them just as models they're like models for me and uh to to get an accurate rendering and then i create my composition up so um and then every once in a while of course when my daughters take their they're fantastic photographers and so when they take beautiful sceneries of uh, over there in italy and i uh you know they capture something really unique i i'll do a painting a piece of artwork from that and um so in that sense um i uh you know when i hear somebody putting down working from photographs i get a little upset but uh i really like stephen bauman's uh approach or his attitude what what'd you think about that you know diane well when i first started doing art i guess i was working always i always worked from life um and i think if you've done that enough, 
that you can um, bring those the things you've learned and um, that into your studio when you're working. So, I mean, I I paint it outside. I do a, I do quite a bit of plein air painting anyway. But um, there are times when I don't feel like going out, or the weather is crappy, or you know, and I do work in my studio and I use photos as a, as a reference and stuff. But I know from being out in the field that the color is not the same in a photograph. So, mm -mm. but since I've been out there in the elements painting, I know what the colors should be, or, you know, I can, I have that in my, um, in my brain somehow from being out there doing it so much that um, I have that to draw from when I'm working in my studio. So, but I, I mean, I, I think photos can be, helpful in that respect because you can't always be out on location you can't always have live models in your studio you can't you know it's like a certain amount of yeah. things that you can't do <clears throat> at least um i'm not able to do it on a regular basis so you know photos do are are handy and i think even like the um classical artists and stuff that you hear about that were around before cameras were around <laughs> they didn't have uh the, the the things that we have today to work from but i think if they had them they would use them too so i don't think it's yeah. like they're a tool you know it's yeah mm -hmm. Con, what, what about you what's your opinions on that yeah i like to to work from life if i can you know with the like diane you know there are days when you you don't feel like going out or you don't you know the weather's awful and uh I just kind of rely on on my brain for the correct intensity of colors that I'm going to use in the skies or whatever, you know. So, and I have photographs that I take myself to work from, you know. So, and another th what what I appreciated uh, Stephen Bauman, you know, in his discussion of that was. Was uh, you have to you have to put some of yourself into it. Uh, too many times, not always, but a lot of artists, if they work from a photograph, basically they're just making they're duplicating the photograph. They're making another photograph, and you have to um, you know you put yourself into your with with your style and and with your impression and your uh, your feelings you know in your work, and that's that's kind of like what I'm doing. I'm using a photograph for, like I said, as a model, as a tool, as a rendering to get an accurate render rendering, but the composition and the color and the placement, that's all m mine. That's my original. It's what's in my mind that I developed, you know, and, and, uh, and, and, and trying to uh, express an emotion, to get an emotion across. Like, my recent painting, when I was trying the new, the new, uh, for me, the new oil painting technique of glazing. Okay, that composition, I used four different photographs for the rendering of that composition. I had a photograph of a rose, of a glass bottle, a photograph of uh, the books, and then another photograph with the lamp and the books, in order to look at the placement and the rendering, and to make sure that. When somebody looked at it, well, yeah, that did look like a lamp. Yeah, that did look like a book. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. had I done hundred percent from my imagination, they wouldn't have been so you know so accurate. And I, I wanted uh, the the uh, the imagination, the composition was in my mind what I wanted to express, but I needed help. I needed models, you know. So that's what and that's what the photographs provided for me, you know. And and uh, that's why I like when the like I said, I had some negative. I was like, okay, here's Stephen Bauman punching up somebody using photographs again. But then later on, he said, you know, <laughs> use your imagination as an artist, you know, to, but, and use the photographs to, uh, yeah, to bring them to life. I mean, that's one of the reasons I've gone and started doing a lot of still lifes because, uh, for me, I can set it up here in the studio and that's working from life, you know? So, yeah, exactly. And then, the other recommended video, which I thought was a nice companion, was Gary Vaynerchuk's, and this, this 
things are, you know, things are scary <clears throat> till you try them. And I thought that talk was just so, so, uh, uh, what's the word I want to use? Uh, poignant, uh, so, uh, uh, inspiring for artists because I've, you know, talked to different artists online. I've read comments, you know, and they're pretty scared. Some of them are scared to try something, you know, and they're scared to enter that. Show. <laughs> they're scared to post that, you know, that, that, that image here or there, you know, and, and it's like, you know, Gary Vanchuk says, yeah, everything is scary until you try it. You know, it's scary when you first, first tried it. And I just thought it was a good, positive, uplifting talk. What did, what did you think about that, Diane? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know that. I, I think, like, growing up, I was always encouraged to try new things and to um, um, not be, not let, like, um, mistakes or when things didn't turn out right, like, hold me back. I think it was kind of encouraged to try it and if it didn't work just you know start over and try it again <laughs> until you got what you wanted i mean yeah so I, I think that's kind of all part of the process of being an artist you're all you're constantly like when you're painting you're constantly putting something down and then making corrections and putting something down and making corrections and i mean that's the yeah. whole process it's it's kind of um innate to what it what you're doing so it's I think artists are probably braver than most people <laughs> in that respect where, I mean, we yeah. try things and, and, um, you know, a lot of people won't, and, we, we do things a lot of people won't do. Like, you know, we put ourselves out there. We, we, um, just experiment and, um, hope for the best a lot of times, but, you know, even, even yeah. like, I mean, I've been painting for a lot, for a lot, long time. And, Every time I start a new painting, I feel the same way. It's like, you know, God, is this one going to turn out, you know, or is it going to get tossed and, and scraped down or whatever? You know, it's like you, you never get over that. It's like, you know, something you do every time. Yeah, I know. I really, you know, I, 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 uh, like I've purposely uh, working on trying to slow myself down because there is a certain stage, what I call the ugly stage, there, where you get to a point to where you're like, God, this thing is horrible. <laughs> and you don't, you this don't. This is not going anywhere. Right. <laughs> and then, but and then, then all of a sudden it starts to come together. Then you, you just, you kind of push yourself and then all of a sudden it starts getting better and better. And that's my problem because then it makes me want to, when I get, I want to get by that ugly stage. I want to get beyond that stage. So I work faster. And in the ending result is maybe it's not as good had I just laid it off to the side and forgot about that ugly stage. Just lay it off for two or three days or a week or whatever and then come back to it, which is what I've been having to really force myself, you know. And, and as a result, my, my, the final product is, is better, you know. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, – there's times when you know I hate I hate what you, you know what you just said, Diane. Yeah, there are times where I start start on a piece of work and you get to that point. This thing is horrible. What am I doing? I'm an artist. I ain't no artist. This is crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's kind of like a roller coaster ride. Sometimes you you know you go through that whole thing. You're like it's good, it's bad. It's good, it's bad. It's like oh crap, I'm gonna throw it away, <laughs> put it away for a while. Come back to it. Oh, it's not so bad. I think I can do something with this. <laughs> and then it's kind of yeah. like it's that way all the way through. Sometimes you know, I other should... times, other times you can you know get to your easel and it just kind of comes out of you and you don't know where it came from <laughs> and it all comes yeah. together real quick and it's like wow okay <laughs> maybe i am an artist <laughs> but, <laughs> I, saw, I, yeah. I posted on facebook i thought it was so cool it, it, it said that you know too many people uh try to uh, uh put you uh put you inside of a box make you fit inside of their box and it's a, but as an artist you take that box and you shove it up their ass. <laughs> and I thought that's so appropriate. Yeah. Who said that? It was, it, was, it was another artist. I forget her name. It was on my feed. You know, it was, it was, it was wonderful. You know, she had an image of a box that too many people try to, you know, try to fit you in a box. So what, as an artist, you ought to take that box and just shove it up their ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, go girl yeah go yeah <laughs> well i think as artists we try we 
we don't want to fit in the box because then we're stifling our creativity and our thoughts and um, yeah. You know, a lot of your work, uh, even like with the Stephen Bauman thing um, you were just talking about, it's so emotional and um, it's not something that fits in a box necessarily. It's mm-hmm. yep. um, when you bring all your feelings and your emotions and the way that if you're out like painting outside or something, how that all affects you and bring that all into your painting. It, it's something that's not something that can fit into a box. So, yep, you have to be willing to go outside the lines. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And uh, speaking, kind of speaking of boxes, in a sense of that little box of the computer where we all have the social media, and everything. Uh, my little, my challenge last week, I didn't get a chance to follow up with it, but I'm just going to ask you to honestly, did the, in, in, did you meet any of those challenges? You know, it had it had to be five percent more. On what was it, Instagram and LinkedIn and? I don't know what my numbers were, so I don't know if I, I know I posted some stuff, but I don't, and I did well, increase, I but I don't know. You was doing quite a bit on uh, on Instagram and uh, Facebook because I saw your postings. Yeah, so yeah. You we're taking advantage of uh, you know advertising your show and everything, the upcoming show. Uh, mm-hmm. That that was fantastic. Well, then next next week, what we'll do is we'll do a uh, an update. We'll give you another week. You know, <laughs> or, uh, I'll go through the numbers, the numbers again next week. But something else I wanted to, wanted to bring about, I came across a blog posting that I had never heard of this before with regards to uh, postings on uh, on social media. And they called, let me get a little light where I can see it here. And it was called the uh, 70, 70, 20, and 10 rule. And briefly, the seventy percent of your content that you post on social media, and these are on Facebook and all the social media platforms, um, they sh- it should um, uh, promote your brand. It should be about your brand. Uh, the and posting tell your story, tell your story of how you your process, how you create your art, and everything. Now uh, that's seventy percent. Okay. 20% is to share information about other artists, maybe collaborations that you've done. Uh, and it, it will help you, you know, form, you know, a valuable relationships, you know, with artists and um, maybe uh podcast that you participate in and listen to. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> hint, hint, hint. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a, and then the 10%, which is the one that everybody thinks ought to be 70, but this is the one that makes the most sense. The 10% is your self advertisements. When you do post actual requests for people to buy things from you, to buy your art or your, or your prints or apparel, or whatever, these are your actual advertising. These should only be of all of your postings on social media. Only 10% should be like that. It should be your ads. Now, and I came across this blog posting was because, and the, the temptation is there. I'm already seeing with the holidays. I'm starting to see other on my feed, other artists, you know, that are posting, you know, uh, special Christmas deal, 10% off, you know, and I, and I'm seeing more of that than I am on the other regular content. So what the, so my, um, my warning or whatever is, uh, try to, if, Try to stay with the 70, 20, 10 rule because what will happen is like in the rational, uh, the, the average, you know, with the advertisements, uh, sure. They may see you, but if that's all they see all the time, then, you know, they're going <coughs> to, they're going to leave, you know, cause especially if you have new, you know, new visitors or whatever, you know, they, they want to see your art. They want to hear your story. They want to know about your story. When they, it goes back to when we took that course with Paul Klein, he talked about building relationships. It comes under that guideline, building relationships. Cause then when people get, get to know you and they get to know your art, they're more likely going to buy something from you than just outright advertising. So what do you guys think about it? You think I'm all, you think I, that blog posting full of crap or? No, that's probably pretty true. Cause I don't think most people like to get 
you know, stuff shoved in their face all the time. And that's kind of what those, you know, buy, buy my stuff now kind of thing is like, yep. I mean, even, even if not art, just anything in general, <laughs> nobody likes to have, you know, some salesman in their face all the time. So, uh, and, and I think, I think most people will buy something from people that they, they say, um, no, you know, like, and trust, you know, that's, that's the thing, uh, you know, people will buy from you, especially online, if they don't know who with, you are, with they're the, less likely to buy from you. The thing is, with the holidays coming up here, you know, yeah. the pressure. Now, I do push. I do push my jewelry during the holidays. Yeah, you're not. You're not. You're not doing anything wrong. I'm not. When I look at my, but everybody else does it. So I, when you I, know, and I do put things on sale, you know, throughout the year, and then I'll advertise that. But constantly. you know, I don't. Constantly. I don't uh, quit. make it all of my stuff. But feeling guilty you're not you're you're not wrong what you're doing <coughs> i whenever i look at my feed i see a lot of postings from constance and because you have that art pal you know on a macro so i see your art i see stuff you're working on and then maybe once a week once a week i might see one of your ads about your jewelry that's yeah, not bad. i try not to be crazy about it that's not but... bad you're doing you're doing your you're doing your your you know you're following that rule without realizing it you're following a 70 20 you know 10 percent rule you know and i see postings uh, where you know you're sharing other artists you know stuff same way with with diane now diane you share I, other artists i don't see very much of anything from diane she just doesn't get on there like she should but <laughs> <laughs> you get fired up Thanks, ought to be Things ought to be slowing down for Diane a little bit now that it's getting winter time. But she did get this I'm last week. Farm. I think this last week I saw <coughs> postings from Diane this last week than what I've seen maybe in, in the year before. <laughs> 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 you were, yeah, there were, there, you know, and I was thinking, I was thinking, all right, yeah, she, you know, she, she's getting up there trying something, you know, and, uh, that's what this is all. I usually I usually don't post a lot except for when I have a show coming up or something, and I need to be better at that. But I just, I just yeah. come up with time a lot of times. So the thing is, is it's 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 all about branding. It's about branding, getting getting yeah. your nose out there, and yeah, it's like that old baseball movie, you know. Uh, you know, I really worked hard on the jewelry branding when I you know started listening to Gary V a lot and and learning about selling online as opposed to, you know, just I used to always go on Saturdays and sell in a open market. But yeah. um, I did a lot of branding with the jewelry line, but I haven't, um, it just isn't moving like I want it to move. So I have stopped making jewelry and I've started painting again. So. So that's, that's the, uh, the words of wisdom this, uh, for our <laughs> artists listeners that are artists and non uh, non artist listeners that are posting maybe you know things trying to sell things on online follow that 70 20 10 rule i thought it was pretty cool the way yeah that uh gentleman it's a, it was a real long i mean long piece blog piece i think it was like a i don't know i think it took me like 40 minutes to read the whole thing but i only <laughs> only extracted the the highlights you know <laughs> I didn't want to go through the whole thing. It would have been very boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's wrap up this episode. This is, you have been listening to the artist friends podcast episode 69 for November the 2nd, 2020, our first episode for the month of November. And we are looking forward to a fantastic month coming up here. we got a lot of things planned happening and uh, Diane has a, uh, a major exhibi exhibition coming up. Next week, we'll be getting closer to it, so I'll let her tell us a whole lot more about it next week. And uh, Constance is probably going to have something going on. We're going to – our future episodes, you want to stay tuned. They're going to be exciting. And please, if you like these episodes, please give us – send us some love, all right? Give us a thumbs up. Give us a, a positive star rating. Let us know you enjoy however you find these podcasts. I'm going to say goodnight to Diane and Constance. And good night, Clyde. Yep. <laughs> good night, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Con uh, I was going to say Constance. <laughs> good night, Diane. <laughs> good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. You did it. You did it. I, I knew I was going to get you. Okay. Folks, <laughs> you know, I ran an old, old time radio station. Now, there is <laughs> a comedy episode of the, uh, George Burns and Gracie Allen's. 
And every time George Burns would say, would say, uh, say goodnight, Gracie. And Gracie would say, say goodnight, Gracie. Good night, Grace. <laughs> Constance did it. Good night, Constance. She did it. <laughs> I love, I love George Burns and, uh, and Gracie Allen. I like, so they come on, I watch them and they are hysterical. Yep. <laughs> All right, folks, thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www dianehuntstudio.com Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash c-b-r-o-s-n-a-n-s Clyde J. Kell at www.cjkellartworks.com If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at signmystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.